Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, some of you may have heard about an asteroid out near Jupiter that may have come from outside our solar system. It's been all over the headlines the last couple of days, and many of you have asked, what do I think? Well, the asteroid is called 2015 BZ509. However, the more I read about it, the more I find myself wanting to call it 2015 WTF. Yet this object has a lot of really strange properties, and one group who was prompted to look at the dynamics of its orbit basically declared that they think that it must have been an interstellar object at some point. Now, I'm not really convinced by their argument, but let's rewind and actually look at the object and why it's so fascinating. The object was first observed in November 2014, but they only get three data points in a single night, so they weren't able to come up with a proper orbit for it. It would wait until January of 2017 before they got more observations and they got a long enough arc to determine the orbit and say, what the heck, this thing is going around the sun retrograde. The vast majority of objects move around the sun in the same direction. In fact, there's only about 80 known retrograde asteroids out of almost 800,000 known objects. So the odds that an object orbits the sun in the wrong direction is 0.01% or less. But even more so, this object was much closer in than the vast majority of retrograde objects. And its eccentricity was actually relatively low. Furthermore, its it, uh, orbit was extremely close to that of Jupiter. This thing was essentially flying around the sun in the wrong direction and having close encounters with the heaviest planet in the solar system twice every orbit. Needless to say, astronomers were quite interested in this, and they began modelling its orbit, and it turns out that it is actually in a stable resonance with Jupiter. These periodic close encounters with Jupiter will change the orbit one way, and then half an orbit later, the encounter will change it back, leaving the object trapped. This is what you call a co-orbital asteroid, and there's another great example of co-orbital asteroids. They are the Trojans. Now, these sit around the Lagrange points, the L4 and the I L5 points near Jupiter. Many people incorrectly think of uh, Trojan asteroids sitting very close to these points. The truth is, they actually extend a long way out in a giant cloud, and they kind of orbit around these periodically. So these are orbits near Jupiter where the interactions between Jupiter's gravity, the Sun's gravity, and the motion of the object all kind of balance out over time and leave them locked in this stable orbit relative to the large planet. So for this latest paper, Fasi Namuni and uh, Helena Moraes decided to take the orbit and then rewind time in the solar system to figure out where it came from. Because of limitations in astrometry, we can't be exactly sure where the asteroid is or what orbit it's on, so it's common practice in these kind of simulations to take more than one sample, to basically take, in this case, a million different slight variations on the object. Essentially, a million different subtle variations on the object's possible history. The simulated solar system was a, a little bit simplified. They removed the inner terrestrial planets and added their mass to the Sun. They only really used Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. And uh, on top of this, because they were dealing with very long time periods and they were dealing with objects that might get uh, pushed a long way from the Sun, they included or incorporated the effects of the galactic tide. Because the Sun itself is orbiting in the gravity field of the galaxy, this tends to affect orbits of objects that move further and further away from the Sun and perturb them. So they ran their simulation and they rewound it back in time. And what did they find? Well, they found that most of the objects disappeared very, very quickly, unsurprisingly being close to Jupiter. They had a high probability of getting thrown off to infinity or crashing into the Sun. This chart shows the orbital elements after 40 million years. Now, of the 1 million objects they started out with, they were down to something like 45,000. About 35,000 of those were still stuck in this resonance with Jupiter, but the other 10,000 were in the process of escaping. And if you look at the chart, you'll notice on the inclination graph at the top that many of them are escaping at very high inclinations. They're essentially heading up through the poles. You can also see there are still a huge number of objects in this co-orbital region down here. Don't worry if you don't follow these charts exactly. They're just showing that the objects change their orbits over time due to the effects of Jupiter. Now, that was 40 million years. They rewound it to 4.5 billion years ago. 
Back at the origin of the solar system as we know it, there were only 27 possible objects that were still in this resonance. While the median lifetime of the test objects had been about 6.5 million years, some of them had found just exactly the right orbit and hung on right back to the start of the solar system. In fact, they rewound it even further and they went back like 40 billion years. And the authors did point out that you know, running a simulation that far back in time very likely could have led to some to numerical precision breaking down and objects getting lost just simply because of errors in the computer simulation rather than in you know the real version now how they get from this to deciding that it's likely an interstellar object is a little philosophical so the authors argue that the chances of us seeing this asteroid at this particular moment when it's in this amazing special orbit would happen to be really, really remote, and therefore it's more likely that this object actually is in a stable resonance that has lasted the lifetime of the solar system. And therefore it must have been captured about four and a half billion years ago, and that is before the solar system had an Oort cloud. That is a scattered population of objects that could have made their way back down through the polar orbits into uh, this resonance. Four and a half billion years ago, it would have had to come from somewhere else. It couldn't have formed in this retrograde orbit, and it probably couldn't have got kicked into this retrograde orbit. This is their kind of line of arguing. And I'm not really 100% convinced by this. For a start, you know, their own simulation showed millions of objects essentially disappearing off into interstellar space. Well, of course, these things are reversible. That means that there are hypothetical orbits for these things to come in from interstellar space and come down into this orbit in a few million years. And then the question is, are there enough objects coming into the solar system to have one of them fall into this exact capture path? Or is it more likely that an object sat in this orbit for the life of the solar system? All I can say is I think that it needs more study. And of course, the next question that people ask is, well, if it's this really cool object from outside the solar system, why don't we send a space probe to it? And my first answer to that is, well, it's in a retrograde orbit and you would need a lot of delta V to actually get into orbit and rendezvous with this thing because you'd have to flip your entire orbit around and go the wrong way. And I'm sure there's some astrodynamicist out there that's already done the math and figured out that the there are potentially gravity assists that could do this. Far easier would to have a probe do a fly past and potentially hit it with an impactor so you could get an idea of the surface composition by watching the material vaporize, just like NASA did with Deep Impact in 2005. But I think before anybody is sending any space probes up, there will be a lot more research and uh, I think there will be many, many alternative solutions offered. It is a big universe out there and there's always new things to surprise us. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.